Um, we talked about qualitative data. We talked about quantitative data, blonde, brunettes, redheads versus average age. Um, we're going to talk about the mean, median, mode, and distribution. Now, there's about six or eight of these numbers that are very, 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 very important. And I'm going to write them down on the whiteboard because I'm not going to follow the book because this is math. Okay? We're going to go to the whiteboard. And we are going to talk about mean, median, mode, range, mid-range, standard deviation, variance, and standard deviation. Capiche? So, <coughs> oh, it's working. Mean, median, mode. Range, mid range, variance, and standard deviation. Now, everybody in here knows how to find the mean. Why do you know how to find the mean? Because you've been taking, you've been finding your average for your tests for your. Grade since when? Since school started. Okay, since you since you were able to calculate your average, you've been calculating average. So everybody in here knows how to find the mean. You add them all up and you divide by what? Um, however many. So the summation of x divided by n, or the yeah, n divided by x, summation of x, however you want to put it. You sum all of them up. And you divide by n. It's also called x bar. It's also called mu. It's also called mean. And the average. Now what's x bar? That's your sample. Meaning that if you see x bar in a presentation, that means that's the sample mean. If you see mu, that's not the sample mean, but the what? Population mean. So therefore, you can sound intellectual and sound like another stuff. What is that? That third sample? Mu. M E W. Median. When, you, so when I when I say the word median, what do you immediately think of? Middle. No. Middle of the road, right? Because what's in the middle of the road? Median. All right. So the middle of the road. That's your pretty much your do y'all see that little dot on there? Blinking? Dang old pixel. Dang old blinking. You didn't think I knew what that's called. Mm -hmm. Okay. Median. That's the middle. There's three little dots. Four little dots. One little, two little, three little pixels. <laughs> Can't sing that song anymore because it's racist. Mode. Mode is the one that shows up what? The most. Remember mode? Most. The number that shows up the most. Again, a lot of you have had probability and statistics before, so a lot of you know this. So don't, don't, don't fuss at me. Okay? But some of you have never had probability and statistics. So, range. Your range is your highest minus the lowest. Your highest number minus your what? Your lowest number. Mid-range. Mid-range is kind of the middle. It's the calculated middle. Okay? Calculated middle. What's the difference in the median? The median is the presence. I don't know how to spell presence. Is it C? N C. E N C E. I thought it was. I can't. Anyway, the present meaning that if you put your numbers in order, you go. You have five numbers. The third number is the middle. Okay. Is it calculated? No. It's observed. It's, it's sitting there, right there. So if you've got four numbers, would you just find the middle of the one? Get into that and then do that. Should I be in charge for a while? Okay. I appreciate that. Yeah. You're right. Um, so if 
if it's odd, if it's odd, if n is odd, you just pick the middle. Those dots are multiplying. If n is even, you take the average of the two middle numbers, like you said. I'm impressed. Okay? So you got the median and you got the mid range. Calculate the middle. How do you calculate the middle? Your highest plus the lowest divided by what? <coughs> In some cases, this is also called the what? The midpoint. In some cases, it's called the midpoint. Mid range, midpoint. Same thing. Variance and standard deviation we're going to get to in a little bit. Now, before you do anything with all of these, what do you have to do to your data? Put it in order. You cannot do those things and not put them in order. Aprende. Sí. Sí. Capish. How do you say how do you say yes in Italian? Is it C? Sí? I have no idea. Oui, oui. We oui is French. Dang old parlez-vous français. Je m'appelle du bed. Just hold on a minute. I'm not used to this new format of this book. I know. I don't like it. I don't like it. We're going to talk about outliers in just a minute. I want to get to a, I want to get to an example. I want to get to an example. Just bear with me. I heard that. That was a yawn. I heard that. You only allowed to yawn three times. After that, I threw you out. Well, okay, here's, okay, there's three numbers right there. Or uh, not three numbers. I want you to, no, I don't want to do that. I want to go here. I want to go to chapter contents. What is this, 6A? And I just want to pull the number up because I'm going to show you. I'm going to impress y'all. Let's go here. And let me find a problem that I want. There we go. There, perfect. All right. I want you to write those numbers down. And I'll try to blow it up a little bit for you. Well, somebody, no matter how big I blow it up, they're going to say, I can't see, I can't see, I can't see. Sit in front of the room. There you go. Now I want you to find I want you to find all those numbers that I just talked about mean, median, mode, range, mid range. Find those numbers based on, and I'm sure that 98% of y'all are going to be able to do all of it because you've had exposure to those things. What about the two percent? Well, two percent is always going to suck. So you're just one of those losers. That suck. Don't you love how I encourage y'all? It's the best feeling. Yeah, it is. All my students get the same encouragement. Quit. My son and daughter get it too. I know how my dad is. Yeah, I had a student last semester. You are just like my daddy. I said, well. That a great guy. Yep. Yeah.
Was it, is Studio Records in Anderson Hall? It's in Anderson Hall, isn't it? Yeah. Somebody was asking me where to where is Student Records. Now, those of you that have a laptop or a computer and you do your homework on the computer, you can hit this little button right here and send it over to the Excel spreadsheet. Now, I show all my calculations on the Excel spreadsheet. I do not do it to make you feel intimidated. I do not do it to make you fail. I do not do it because you don't understand Excel. I do not do it because you understand Excel. I do it because I can put everything on the board. Okay? That's why I do it. So I use it as a presentation tool only. I do not use it to make you feel like you have to use it. Now, if you know how to use it, then knock yourself out. Okay? Use it all you want to. But the reason I use it is just for presentation. So, no eating pen but a crackers in class. All right, so you take the, or donuts either, or enable editing, which I hate that. I don't know why they put that on there. All right, I'm going to put a couple of lines in here just so I can, I don't like having it at the very top. I'm showing you some of my OCD things I do not like, so I'm just going to insert. Those are cheese crackers, by the way. Oh, cheese crackers, okay. What's in the middle of them? Cheese. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know what's wrong with me. Okay, put them in order. Go up to data. They will sort. You can do this on the calculator, but the only reason I don't show the calculator is because I have to type them in and it takes up time in the classroom. So I just don't. I'll show you how to do it one time on the calculator and then you, you just practice on your own. But that's how you put them in order. And these are basically X's. All right, that's your X column. Each one, that's X sub 1, that's X sub 2, X sub 3, X sub 4, and so on. What does N equal? Well, how many do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So N is equal to 10. N is equal to 10, so therefore it is even. So i got to find my two middle numbers which are going to be those two numbers right there, and I'm going to highlight those for later. Oops, sorry. Highlight those two, yellow, and we're going to use them later for the mean or median. Okay, so mean is also called X bar. It's also called average. All right? is equal to all these numbers divided by, let me put a parenthesis around both of them, sorry. Just shut up. Parentheses. Divided by what? Ten. Ten. All right, check yours. It should be three. That's not right. A3 through A12. That's not right. I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to hit summation. And I'm going to hit this. Divided by 10. There. I don't know what, what, what went on that last one. Okay, 51.5, that should be your average. Median. Is equal to? Let's see. 
So I'm going to add these two together. And divide by what? Two. And then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to put mode. Mode is observed, so you cannot calculate it. Is there anything that shows up twice? No. Okay, so you put none, or you put non-applicable, or you put there ain't none. Okay, do not put what? Zero. Do not put zero, because you're always going to have some smart aleck teacher that's going to say zero is not even in the data set. Okay, do not put zero. Put none. There ain't none. There ain't none. Does not apply. Does not exist. Put a word. Okay? Do not put zero. And I have to tell you all that because I have students that if I don't tell them that, that's what they'll put. And then the, the, the homework and the test will mark it wrong. Next is your what? Range. Range is equal to what? Your highest. Minus the what? Mid-range. Mid-range is equal to the highest plus what? Lowest. Plus the lowest divided by 2. So that's all the information that I've given you so far. Now, I'm going to write the formula for the standard deviation and the variance up here on the board. And I want you to write it down, but I don't want you to write it down thinking that you're going to have to memorize it. You're not. I want you to write it down because I want you to read it. I want you to read it because it's important. Look at the, look at the pretty little dots. So I'm still not right with this room. Oh well. So I want to put the variance is equal to the summation of x minus x bar quantity squared over n minus 1 when the standard deviation is equal to the square root of the summation of x minus x bar over n minus 1. So basically, what is the standard deviation? The square root of what? Of the variance. Good job. I'm impressed. Okay. So once you find the variance, all you got to do is take the square root and find the standard deviation. So the variance is what you need to learn how to do. Now read that for me. What does it say? What have I got to do to do the variance? That means that's not rhetorical. I want y'all to interact. What does the mean? This one. Okay, you have to use the mean. That's x bar. But what do you have to do with the mean? Quit. Yeah, quit. Just throw your pencil down and make it pop up against your notebook paper. You know, pop. Who's falling back here? Who's stealing electricity? That's mine. Oh. Steal on that tree. Just take, take, take. <laughs> All right. What are you going to do with X bar? You plug it in. No. What is, what, read the formula. What, is it, what am I doing with X bar? You're subtracting it from X. All right. What is X? All the numbers. All the numbers. So in this next column, I'm going to label this next column X minus what? X bar. And I want you to take each one of these X's and subtract X bar from each one of these and put the number right there. So do that. I'll do the first one for you. You're so nice. Actually, I know most of y'all are going to quit. So equals this. Minus this and F4 for those that know what that means. 
There you go. So there's your first one. Now do each one after that. And write this in your notes because you're going to forget how to do this. And then you're going to call me and I'm going to be at home half drunk or whatever. And I'm going to hang up on you. <laughs> yeah, me and my son had a cake party tonight. Yeah. DSS is invited. I'm such a terrible parent. <laughs> My son got in the truck yesterday. And he said, "Hugh, he said, he didn't say, you. he said, Dad, he said, you're right. There's a lot of live PD people in junior high school." I said, "Yep." I said, "Just think about it. One day they're going to be famous. They're going to be on live PD." Where's he go to school? Robert Anderson. Oh, that's why. Well, they're basically it's a good school, but the problem is parents are raising kids that need to have a knot jerked in them. No, babies are having babies. That's what they do. Well, you're right. You're right. Personal experience. My uh, daughter is, she'll be, she just turned 20, okay? Second year at Clemson, and three of the girls that she used to be best friends with in high school, all three of them, have they they have kids and no no daddy. And I'm not saying that's bad or good. I mean, I'm just saying that that's one of the problems we have. We have it's not the mamas that's a problem. It's the daddies. That's the problem. If we had a whole lot more daddies, we'd have a whole we'd be a whole lot better off. Now somebody's gonna say I'm racist or something. I'm misogynist or I'm something. Well, I think that's true. I'm not scared of my mama, but I'm scared of <laughs> <laughs> my my kids they said they're you know my 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 daughter's got a boyfriend, and uh, I've only met him once. He won't come around the house, <laughs> and I I haven't done anything. All I do is I I stay on the farm, and my kids tell them that I don't go anywhere because I don't need to be around people. <laughs> and and if anybody if anybody knows what that means, that means I don't need to be around stupid people. That's what it means. He's not sure yet. That's what it means. Well, anyway, <laughs> he told one of my students was a uh, friend of his was in my class last semester. And I said, yeah, I said, I met him one time. He said, yeah, he don't come, come around you. I said, why not? I said, I haven't done anything. I've only spoke to him one time. He's just heard a lot of stuff. I said, well, you can't believe everything you hear. If you, if you believe everything you hear, I'm the Antichrist and and a terrible dad and terrible everything else. Did you answer him? Huh? I only said hello. No. Hey, how you doing? I shook his hand. So. I don't know. Maybe it might have been. Might have been three pistols on my side. I don't know. Somebody give him a handshake. He'll do it. Yeah, he came to the house with her one time and stayed in the truck. So I don't know if he just don't like me or what. He's scared. He's a good guy. I think he's all right. From your one interaction? Huh? From your one interaction? Well, I've kept my eye on him through several different avenues. <laughs> i got a lot of friends at the Sheriff's Department. i got a lot of friends at Pendleton Campus. i got a lot of friends where he works. So. Yep. I can also do that. All right. So here we go. I'm going to copy that down, and then you're going to feel good about yourself. So you don't have to put smokestacks on your four-cylinder truck. There we go. All right, now let's go back to the formula. What does the formula say do after you subtract x minus x bar? Square it. Square it. So what are you going to do with each one of those numbers? Square them. Don't square them. So I'm going to put x minus x bar, quantity squared right here. And 
I'm going to do the first one for you so you feel good about yourself. And you do the rest of it. I guess I'm just old fashioned and old fashioned hadn't, you know, old fashioned was doing pretty good. Until we started going against the old fashioned ways and the, I guess you call it progressive. And I don't think the progressives are doing too good right now. Do they even call it progressive anymore? That's what my mom says when she's. Talking about, you know, we'll go back to like her high school year, but she's like, that was like a progressive girl. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know. I, the reason I say progressive is progressive is kind of like the opposite of old fashioned. Yeah. And I'm not old fashioned on a lot of things. There's a lot of things that, you know, when it comes to what you do, we, what, you, what you do on your time, that, that don't have anything to do with me. I don't care about that. But when it comes to, you know, your child being in the same room with my child, your child needs to know how to act. Because mine don't act right, he's going to learn how to act. All right, so we copy that down. And when we copy that down, we get what? That number. Now, let's look at the formula. We've done, so far, we've done, let me turn on the handy dandy highlighter. So far, we've done this. Hello? Whatever. So far, we've done this, we've done this, we've done this, we've done this. What's left on the numerator? That funky looking E. What's that funky looking E mean? Sum them all up. Summation. Add them all up. So I'm going to add up all of these numbers and put it right there. Add them all up. Check your number against my number. I believe it's correct. Have you added them all up yet? Yep. Okay. Now, what is that? That is your numerator of your variance and your standard deviation. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to say variance. And now it's going to go. Now it's doing the minus. I've got it blowed up right now, and I really don't want to have to go back down, so that's why I'm going to the mouse and do it. Variance equals, in my 1240.5, and I like y'all, so I'm going to do this next calculation. 10 minus 1 is 9. I'm going to do that for you. There you go. So what's the variance? Somebody give me the variance. <clears throat> What is 1240.5 divided by 9? 137.8. Huh? And then the point three repeating. That's fine. Now, I don't care about the variance. They're going to ask it about the homework. They're going to ask it on the test. I care less about it. All right? Take the square root of it. Standard deviation is equal to what? Well, 125 is 15. So we're probably talking about 15.5. What is it? 11.7. Oh, I'm way off. 
12 is 144. I'm thinking, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of something. I'm thinking of 225 is what I was thinking of. I'm sorry. So 11 point what? 7. 11.7 is your standard deviation. In statistics, there are several numbers that are important. Margin of error. In. The two most important are the mean and the what? Standard deviation. Write those down. The two most important numbers to you right now are the mean and the standard deviation. You won't learn how to do it throughout. Okay? But this is how you find the mean and the standard deviation. Find the mean, you subtract the mean from each one of the numbers, you square those numbers, you add them up, and that's your numerator. So you need to take your handy dandy highlighter, and you need to highlight this number right here. You need to highlight this number right here, and you need to highlight that numerator because that's what you're finding. When you're finding that number, you're getting the numerator of your variance and your standard deviation. Question. All right. I'm playing. Now, what is the numer? What is the? And we'll get into that and write this down. What is the mean and the standard deviation? Write that down because that's what we're going to start on when y'all come back Monday. Now, right now, y'all should be able to start working on 6.1 or whatever it's called in your book, 6A homework. You should be able to start on it. Not to be able to finish it because I'm not finished with it yet, but you can at least start on a few problems. Okay? All right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I think that's how many we got in here, isn't it? I got a what? Yep, yeah, it's a purse. Actually, it's a bag. I got so much stuff I have to carry. I'm confident. I wear pink shirts and I wear a purse. I don't care. And I don't have pipes on my truck either. One. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That means everybody's here. Okay, who's got questions for me? All right, so y'all should be working on what? What? Homework for what? You should be working on chapter five and six point A. That's what y'all should be working on.